Well, good morning, and thank you so much, Pastor Daniel. And, uh, well, I'm here with Paul. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Wynell. So uh, amazing to be able to be here with you on another Sunday. And um, we are excited today because we have something different today, don't we? We do. Uh, this morning, we have uh, two special guests uh, joining us, and uh, we are going to spend some time talking to them about their testimony, how they found Jesus, and the rest we'll just leave until we progress through uh, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is the fact that sometimes people in our own church mm -hmm. may not be aware of some people that are coming and are faithful to our services. And also sometimes people aren't even aware about what some of them do. So uh, first of all, uh, just to explain, we have uh, obviously due to social distancing and yeah. abiding by all the government guidelines, one of our guests is going to be here with us in the studio. And then we have another guest who is going to be joining us uh, via a link from their home. So uh, we are excited. So the first thing we're going to be doing, we have uh, sent them some questions. And normally this is the time of year which we call transformation Sunday, and it's about transformation mm -hmm. testimonies. So we are excited to get in and hear from them about how God has transformed their lives. So I'm mm -hmm. going to get on and first of all, just let you know who's with us. And um, then I'll uh, let you know who's going to go first. So first of all, uh, with the link online, we have Kim Gomez. So Kim, good hey. morning. Good morning, Kim. <laughs> Good morning. So, uh, Kim, we're so excited to have you this morning, and we're going to uh, ask you a few questions uh, this morning with, uh, along with our other guests. So for those of you that may not know Kim, she'll tell us a little bit more about herself in just a minute. She is a part of uh, my life group, and uh, she's a great con contributor and um, also just an amazing uh, woman of God who's been a real inspiration even to me. And then here in the studio, who do we have in the studio? In the studio, we have Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> just let him introduce in, in himself here. If I could say, oh, no, you're not Jamaican, so I can't say well going to you. <laughs> and uh, I'm just being directed to another camera. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Jeremy is uh, part of uh, the technical team, so he comes under the uh, area that I oversee. And it is so great to have him on board. He works behind the scenes with Josiah and with JC on Sunday mornings and uh, helps produce the programs and does the technical work with the camera. So what you see some Sunday mornings, Jeremy is behind that. And it's such a pleasure to have him with us today. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Great. So um, I'd like to just start um, with uh, Kim this morning. And um, Kim, uh, lots of people may not... Uh, know you. I know you've got a lot of our uh, our ladies supporting you and uh, ladies group uh, supporting you as well. But I just want you to introduce yourself. Where are you from originally? And just share with us a little bit about uh, what you do. Okay, well, so uh, my name's Kim Gomez. I am originally born and raised in the UK, believe it or not, but I spent uh, over 20 years in South Africa. I went there when I was 13 with my family and I met my amazing husband there and we had our children there. And then in 2002, we returned to the UK. So yeah, that's where I'm from and uh, yeah. Okay. Is that it? I'd like to hear from you, Kim. Thank you so much. And uh, Jeremy, we're going to switch over to you the same. Uh, just tell us a little bit about where you're from originally and um, what do you do? Yeah, so um, I'm originally from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the best island in the Caribbean. <laughs> All right, shout out to Brother Gervain, you know, God bless. <laughs> um, yeah, so I moved um, to the UK in 2008 to join the army originally. Um, so I spent almost six years serving in the British Army um, and now wow. I'm here so currently I'm working as a mental health social worker um, in a nearby local authority so I've been quite busy um, but God has a purpose for me and but now I'm here. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Amen to that. Wow. And uh, Kim, I'm now going to switch over to Kim 
Am I right, Why, Neil? Go for it. I just got to talk to the boss occasionally. To, <laughs> oh, that's just my bit of fun. Okay, Kim, I want you just to take a few moments to tell us how you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Wow. So um, I was raised a Catholic, um, went to a Catholic high school in North Wales, and um, my met my husband, who's Portuguese descent, and uh, he is also a Catholic. And then, back uh, about twenty five years ago, um, I just had this feeling that even though I, I went to the church and um, I did communion and all those things, I just felt there had to be more. There had to be uh, more than just. Um, you know, rituals and remembering things and, and that kind of thing. And then I happened to work with a, an amazing lady called Nomi in in, uh, in South Africa. Oh, sorry. My, and anyway, and uh, she went to a, a, like a free church and um, she said to me, would you like to come along? And I was like, oh, this is a bit weird. And I thought, you know, we've heard about them being happy clappy and a bit strange. And uh, so I I just said, yeah, I'll go. But before I went, I actually drove to a Catholic church in our local town in, in uh, Johannesburg. And I'll go and try one more time, Lord. I'm just going to come and try one more time. Is this where you want me? And I went there and the doors were closed and I just couldn't get in. And I just thought, right, OK, so I'm going to go. So I went with my friend to the Sunday service and um, we got to the stage where they, um, it was just real it was a real change obviously seeing the music and people happy and laughing and clapping and and it, it was over 26 years ago but i still remember the sermon it was about your first love and how when you first met jesus and how you fell in love with him and i was just thinking this is weird how how weird is that so when it came to um taking communion and, and those of you that will know of the catholic you can't take communion unless you go to confession and the whole time this communion was coming round and round i could see it passing everybody and i was like oh, lord how am i going to take this i haven't been to confession it's this whole thing and then just this peace came over me and just i just prayed and i said lord i'm going to do this i'm going to take it and if this first love that you are talking about is real this man's talking about is real then will you give that to me so the communion came and i took it and i just like took it in faith and i was like okay if this is gonna you know this is allowed and this is real then then let it be real and I took it and I felt amazing, just I felt peaceful and just the joy of everybody. And they just seemed so to have real relationship. And then in, I went home and just uh, just was not life was normal. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I just God woke me up. And I had this um, I get emotional thinking about it. I had this. <sighs> amazing joy in my heart this love for god just came up this flutter in my heart and i just knew that was it something had changed and i went back to work the next day and i said to my friend i don't know what's happened but this is you know something's happened in my heart and i just feel such joy and i feel love for jesus every time i think of him and she cried and i cried and uh, she said that's it you've been saved and since from that day to this, 26 years later, that love has never waned. I just love him with all my heart. And I really, truly believe that that was a gift he gave me on that day. So that's it. That is <laughs> amazing, Kim. What an amazing testimony. Mm. And it's not, uh, you know what, it's not the ritual that we, right. that we have. It's not a ritual. Mm. It is the relationship that we have with Jesus. Yes. And it is that love for him and in return, his love for us. And uh, that was a, a, an amazing testimony. And so now, Jeremy, I'm going to switch across to you and I'm going to give you the same question. Yeah. And uh, if you could tell us how you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Yeah. Well, I remember growing up back, um, back home in St. Vincent, um, you know, the norm is that you got taken to church. <laughs> you know, yeah. you didn't have a choice as a child. You got taken to church. My mom has been a strong believer all her life for as long as I know. Um, I think she said something to me one time where, when, when I was seven, I gave my life to Jesus because we had to go to the Sunday school. And, you know, you know, the adults would go to the grown-up side and 
we go to Sunday school, but I never really understood what that meant. And obviously, I had my own journey, you know, in life throughout then. Um, left the Caribbean, came to Sydney. But throughout that journey, when I look back now, God stuck with me, mm. even though I didn't stick with him. Mm. Wow. And he kept true to his promise. And my mom always prayed for me. And I remember night after night, because I gave her a really hard time, especially <laughs> during my teenage years. I'm not going to be totally honest. I gave her a really hard time, you know, and she'd constantly pray. She's constantly crying her, her tears out. Lord, let my son come to know you. Like she, she always said to me, if, if I were to leave a legacy, it's for all of my three children to know Jesus. Wow. My sister knows Jesus. My brother knows Jesus. Amen. Um, so how I came to get to know Christ, I remember last year, July, I graduated as a qualified social worker. It's a big achievement for me. Um, and then I went to Canada, you know, I saw my family, I saw my mom. And then when I came back, I said, you know, you know, despite all this achievement, and if you cast your mind back to the 1st of March when I walked in here, as Pastor Danny was preaching a series called Breakthrough, mm. and he was talking about getting rid of weights, you know, and I had a lot of weight in my life that I needed to get rid of, a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness, a lot of vengeance, you know. And I came here, you know, in the church. I sat in the back. I didn't want anybody, you know, really to know who I am. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Because mm -hmm. I did put it off a month. See, January, right, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Because when I look back at my life and the things I've been through, it's not by chance, it's not by luck, but it's by His grace. And mm -hmm. all the mess, because God's grace is bigger than my Amen. mess. Amen. And Amen. that's what Pastor Mark, I think, said to me when I first walked in here. Really nervous. I didn't want to talk to anybody, <laughs> you know. You know, as you were, so I sat in the back of church and I was listening to Pastor Daniel's statement. We need to get rid of the weights that hold us. I just started crying uncontrollably and I didn't know why. Wow. Tears. And I remember sitting down with you in the sofa as well and Pastor Daniel, I mean, a lot of people, I just, I just tried to hide the tears. You need to try and like <laughs> flood your eyelids and, you know, just trying to hold back the emotion, mm -hmm. you know. And they just said, Lord, you know, in the back, say like, if you love me as much as you do. You know, you've stuck with me all this time. Help me get rid of all this weight in my life. You know, this vengeance, this anger, you know, this bitterness, this sadness, this feeling of discontent. Because no matter what you achieve in life, there's no joy other than in Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, and from the first of March this year, I'm so glad that I made the decision to, you know, to give God my life, you know, to commit wholeheartedly. It's a life changing decision for me. And um, even, even though I think, you know, like even, you know, I look differently. I used to look like really quick tempered and absolutely like I can't believe what God has done for my life. And it's never been the same. Wow. Honestly, I never thought I'd be so happy, you know, until I met Jesus. That is really true happiness. I can't explain it. Amen. <laughs> That's so amazing. I, the Amen. reason I love that is just because. Um, you know, that's just what the experience with Jesus does and, and the relationship. And it's truly not just about uh, rituals. And I love the just the real yeah. honesty and openness mm -hmm. this morning uh, yeah. of both. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to um, move on to uh, the next thing. We've got a, a, some, a lot of things we want to hear from them today. And uh, Kim, um, really um something that you just want to share in particular uh that how you've really been transformed i know we've heard you know the beginning stages of how you got saved but just something as part of your real testimony that you just want to share for others well <laughs> that's been quite a difficult uh journey it has been quite a difficult journey but an amazing one and there's so many things and parts of my journey that I could share and it has been about this real authentic relationship and uh, if I didn't have that I don't think I'd be here today because of the journey and what I did feel to share with you today is really personal and it, it had a huge thing that's impacted my life and my children's life and my husband's life and um, but I just feel it's really uh, good to share and and I can just start off by saying so it was um, about five years ago my husband and I were both made redundant from the same company and uh, I took that time to really pray I was a finance manager for a big corporation and I just really felt God 
where do you want me to be? And uh, amazingly, God opened the door for this um, to become an operations manager for the Life Centre in Chichester. And they are an amazing service that support um, raped and sexually abused people, whether it's historical or current. And that was such a life opener, you know, an eye opener for me. I just really, it changed my life working there. And I felt it was such a privilege to be able to use my skills just to work alongside these amazing counsellors that work so hard with um, people and and just actually interact with the clients that came in that had been through so much. It was such a privilege. And I truly believed I was there to help them. But one day I was in a training session. Uh, we all, obviously, you can imagine because of the intense um, topic that we deal with every day on a regular basis on the phones or all the staff, we had to have really good training. And I was attending a training session. And uh, one of the questions was, um, draw a picture of what um what your childhood was like on on your body how, how it affected was it with joy what what was it and uh just suddenly i just had a flashback a huge flashback that reminded me and i suddenly remembered my own abuse as a child and this as you can imagine was just um, a huge life-changing event and so much so that I, I just started crying and I spoke to luckily I had a clinical supervisor there and people I knew that really loved me and they just came around me and they just said it's okay Kim you're safe you're this and it it, it was just a huge impact but I'm glad to say that that is such a little um, part of the journey that God has taken me on um it, it it was just a small part um and that that changed my life completely in the sense that as you can imagine from not remembering something you suddenly remember and i'm the type of person that so every year the beginning of each year god and i we sit together on the 31st of the month and i say right look what what is your 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 um verse for me for this year what is it what is it you want me to and he gave me john 8 31 32 which is you will know the truth and the truth will set you free and uh, you know we all know with god those of us have been uh, uh, with god for many years we think it's going to be one thing and it was completely another and clearly revealing this truth to me of who i really was and my past um was something that he wanted me to know and i really um can powerfully say it's because he loved me so much he didn't want me to live uh, my sin hidden not my sin the sin that was put on my life he didn't want that hidden in my body in my memory and he loves me so much and we're talking today about transform life that he wanted to transform me into who i am today and i can truly say that through his love through this um journey this day-to-day -day relationship and and i look back now and i can see if i didn't have that love and i didn't have that relationship that personal relationship something like that memory would have broken me and also working in life center i was among people that were clinically trained but also the staff i worked with was so supportive they were just so caring and loving and they carried me through for five years they carried me through and so did my husband this you can imagine his wife and and the mother i was completely changed i was no longer that person who was highly confident and ambitious and um capable i collapsed i i literally lost all uh, all who i was i didn't know who i was i'd lived a lie and uh it was really only through my deep uh, love with Jesus and the love of my husband. You know, every day you say to me, you're so beautiful. My husband, every morning, you are so beautiful. And some days I was so tired and so struggling that I couldn't even get dressed or brush my teeth. But that man loved me through it. Him and Jesus just loved me through it. And I'm so fortunate I have my uh, children, a, such a good relationship, my daughter and my son-in-law, they love me too. And they just said, mom, you're doing the right thing. You know, you're living your truth, your authentic life. And uh, I got 
many years of uh, therapy with Christian counselors. And I really believe in that just to help me through the trauma. And um, yeah, each step was with Jesus. And there was a huge cost. There is a huge cost to obedience. There is a huge cost to freedom. And uh, there's a huge cost to um, being authentic. But I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, this has destroyed um, my relationship with my family. I no longer, when I revealed the truth, it took me years to speak up. And uh, you can imagine speaking up today is hard because there's so much shame. And I do feel out there that there's people that go through this. I know from the statistics, it's one in four that have experienced uh, childhood abuse. And we are so, um, you know, supposed to be in shame and hidden. And yet God just brings everything into the light. And I'm here today to say bringing this into the light is what's transformed me because of him. It has transformed me. And well, Kim, I what I want to encourage people out there is that if you're listening and watching this, please, you know, we have host team, chat team online on all the platforms. Feel free to write in if you need prayer, because I believe that those there are those out there watching and hearing this that this testimony is really reached your heart mm -hmm. and perhaps you felt what Kim was talking about, about the shame and feeling like that no one was there for you, but know that not only are we here for you, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have been through, Jesus loves you and uh, he wants you to come home to him. Well, Kim, uh, we've we've got a few more things to ask you just a bit later, but uh, Jeremy is going to be now joining us again to share the same of um, what is some of the special part of your testimony that you would like to share. Yeah. So um, I think Josiah is going to put something up on the screen of when I was with Jesus and without Jesus, just so you could see the transformation. Um, and it's really important. So when I just left the army, as you can see here, I was full of hatred, full of bitterness, really quick tempered. And a lot of that came from my childhood, actually, because I remember my dad worked out like he left us when I was three years old. So throughout my life, I never had that, you know, authoritative kind of father figure in my life to guide me. Um, actually, you know, to say, actually, this is how, you know, you should do certain things in life, which I think is why my mom had such a hard time sometimes. Um, and I got really bitter. I had this hatred towards him, this bitterness, this anger. And he, and I carried that throughout my whole life and affected a lot of relationships in my life with a lot of people. Like, for example, like I wouldn't really trust men in authority, but I'll always have a good relationship with women. That's because my mother was there for me from childhood, but mm. he wasn't. And it affected a lot of relationship with friends, family, wouldn't trust anyone. And I carried that with me. And one of the darkest periods I encountered in my life was when I was in the British Army. I got diagnosed with clinical depression. I got signed off for 18 months. Um, it was a really dark corner of my life. You know, my you know, my first girlfriend, she left me. So that triggered a series of events, a series of emotions. And my community nurse, um, who was in the mental health team, you know, she's a Christian. And she prayed over me all the time. Um, and she really brought me out of this dark corner. God delivered me out of this dark corner. Like, I didn't know what hit me. At all. I didn't know what depression was. I didn't know how it felt. Um, so I was in a really dark place, like sad, didn't want to talk to anybody, quick tempered. I mean, the old me, I mean, you saw the picture. <laughs> like, honestly, when I look back at it, like, I couldn't believe who I used to be. But there were certain reasons for that. Now, when I look at my achievements in life, and I know God has always given me favor through people. Because when I came here to join the army, because there was either one option why I joined the army. It was either jail, the kind of people I was going to, like the same things I was doing, or dead. Mm -hmm. So I had no choice but to join the army. And my brother, my older brother, was doing well in the Navy at the time, was quite envious of him. You know, the golden boy, the family, my sister's doing well. Naturally, you'll get jealous, isn't it? You know, because mm -hmm. I do want to make my mother proud, yeah. you know. I had to spend three years in college and not two because I got kicked out after the first year. 
got accepted back in second year. So I had to sign, re-sign the two years of college. And then, you know what, I said, I'm going to go make something of myself. So I joined the army. Um, well, originally, I signed up to join the Navy, but I failed the test <laughs> in the Armed Forces <laughs> Careers Office because I wanted to do what my brother's doing. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, he's doing well in life, you know. Why can't I do the same? But I failed the test. And when I was walking out of the office, the Army Sergeant, the Sergeant Lee Allen, I remember his name exactly, from the Duke of Lancaster's, um, he came to say, yeah, why don't you come around and join us? I said, yeah, yeah you know what, whatever, I'll do it. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Simple basic text, pass, pass, good job, you're in. Right, so picture me now going to my first day of training, really scared, coming from the Caribbean, not knowing what am I going to get myself into. These three scary corporals on the bus, but one of those corporals was from St. Vincent, wow. and it made me feel so mm. comfortable. I was really scared. And then, after I passed my training, got assigned to my first unit or my first battalion, I met another Vincentian, <laughs> wow. you know, who's always giving me the right advice. And everything, but what I'm trying to say is throughout my journey, God mm. has always put people in the right places to guide me. Amen. And that's why He stuck through to His promise. You know, He will never leave me, He'll never forsake me, He'll uphold me with His righteous right hand. But even though I didn't stick with Him, and that's what I'm trying to get at here, like throughout my, all my bitterness, through all my mess ups, failed relationships, like having arguments with family members, I caused a lot of mess. Because of my hatred to family, I caused a lot of mess. And when I look back at it now, the transformation, you know, having to walk into this church on the 1st of March this year, all that emotion came running out of me. Mm. Mm. Like, it was built up. No matter how much I tried to keep it in. <laughs> when I passed it, I said, you need to get rid of weight in your life. Get rid of the, the things that weigh you down. You know, certain sins in your life. Certain feelings, emotions. Um, and making like that honest commitment to God from my own decision. It's a commitment. Yeah. You choose. It's a commitment. It's a lifestyle change. That's right. It's a renewing of your mind. Yeah. Committing mm-hmm. to God. Think differently. Think spiritually, heavenly. Not, you know, all the success or anything. None of that matters. We can't take any of that That's when right. we stand in front of God. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, true happiness isn't, I think some people, you know, this is my opinion, some people have the ideal, ideal of happiness. Like, you get married, you get kids, you get housed, you retire, then you die. But true <laughs> happiness is your personal relationship, yes. I feel, with God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Knowing that you're right with Him, knowing that He's there with you. Yeah. And now, where I'm like, I could honestly say now, like, I'm a truly positive person. Like, even the little things in life that we all go through, the road rage, when <laughs> somebody cuts you off, the old me, and you're like, ah, I'll drive and I'll follow you. I would follow. I would have followed you if you cut me off. And how many of us have been there? Yeah, we would have followed. We'd be really if angry honest, because, yeah. they, especially those corners, we have the merging turn lanes. We feel people cut us off as if they don't have the right to, you know. And little things like that would get to me on a scale that is nowhere near what's acceptable of Jesus. But now it's like, yeah, go on, mate. That's fine. You're all right. You're probably late for work than me. I'm okay. But it's those little things such as like getting angry at the lady who's talking to the shopping clerk and you're going to get your shopping done, but she's there chatting away. How many of us have been there? Yeah. It's the little things, transformation. So true. It's so renewing of your mind. Yeah. You know, it's all about loving the stranger, not knowing who he is. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. things like that, like anger. Like the Bible talks about the fruits of the spirit love people like i had none of those <laughs> none exist everyone any all nine of them i had the opposite <laughs> be honest with you i was the opposite you know and that picture you know that showed earlier was the epitome yeah. and in the darkest corners of my life mm-hmm. well when i walked in here on my own decision you know despite putting it off for months and months being hesitant it was the best investment I ever made in my life. Wow. Giving my life to God. That's you know? so amazing. Um, but it's, it's, it's so interesting when the people who know you the most, it's like my mom, you know, my sister, and they start noticing the difference in you. You know, I even look different. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which is which is amazing. Um, yeah, I'm just getting more... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really tough. Um, but despite what I've been through, I am here. Yes. God has has you know, God has a plan for me, and and yeah. especially during this pandemic, you know, as a social worker, mental health, 
Mm. You know, having been through that experience of suffering from depression, being through, I have that lived experience. So I can now go out and I could make a difference to people out there who are really struggling. Amen. And I thank God. I take no glory for myself at work. I made that very clear. Any, every success story, God gets the glory, not me. Thank God. Amen. Wow. Hey, man, what an incredible testimony. Yes. And, um, you know, all of us have that opportunity to change. Yeah. And uh, I've just recently been reading a book for about the fourth time called I Choose to Change. And uh, for me, I, I pick it up sometimes when I know I need to change on certain things. And uh, Jeremy, you chose to change. And I think that's great. All the things that you've been through, and as we've been talking about today, how God has his hand on our life, and sometimes we don't realize. You talked about signing up for the, the Royal Navy. Didn't happen, because God had a different plan. Yeah. He put you in the army. You met people from your own country mm -hmm. and developed you from there. And then you went through that time of depression, and uh, look where you've ended up, the job you're in. You're able to have... Um, yeah. empathy with people that have been there and uh, are probably going through some of the things that you went through but because you went through them yourself yeah. you're able to put in yes. uh, some encouragement mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about Amen. encouraging Absolutely. people showing them that Jesus loves them and that we love them and uh, you're a great example mm -hmm. and uh, thank you, thank you. Since you came in, when we were downstairs earlier on having some coffee and just yet, you have a radiance about you. Yeah, agreed. There is something about you. If I didn't know you, there's something about you. I'd be saying, what, what, what have you got that I need? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, you have such a beautiful smile. Mm -hmm. And it, it, Jesus radiates through you. And uh, wonderful words. All right. So now I'm going to turn back to Kim. And uh, we're going to pop over to Kim. Kim. Let me ask you this question. What brought you to City Life Church and what has it meant to you? Well, um, after going through what I went through, I was unable to, as Jeremy talks about mental health and all that kind of thing, I really struggled with my uh, depression that I couldn't go to church for um, about two years. Just the noise of it was too much. Um, being around people was too much. And uh, after, you know, 20 odd years of being a regular going every Sunday, it was such a shock not to be able to go. I would panic and cry. And so, you know, as we spoke earlier, it's God's timing. It's just perfect. And um, I have a, a, a friend, uh, Megan, and her children, or like my children, you know, my nieces and nephew, Abigail and Daniel. And uh, fortunately, Daniel started working at City Life Church. And one day he messaged me and my husband and said, we've got this gateway conference. Don't you want to come along and just see what it's like? And him knowing that we are from South Africa and we love you know, vibrant music and multiculture, and we love all that kind of thing. He said, would you like to come along? And my husband said, right, I think it's time. Let's, you know, you're in a good place. You let, Let's go. And uh, we went to the, uh, well, I went to the Gateway Conference with Megan, and it was just life-changing. It really was life-changing. Just all the different testimonies and stories and preaching just really spoke to my heart. And my husband and, what, and I went along to the um, International Day, and we loved it. People were dressed up in African clothes, and the music was so vibrant. And my husband said to me, this is home. He said, this is it. This is where we're going to be. And we just felt we belonged instantly. We just felt um, the people were real. We could be ourselves. Um, it wasn't like, um, you know, middle-aged posh place where you just feel you have to speak the certain Christian speak or anything like that. You could just be authentic because everybody there is authentic. And uh, it has really transformed our lives in the sense that now, like Wynel said, I'm part of her group. I'm, I have an amazing bunch of women that I'm so close to that, uh, uh, you know, we, I support them. They support me. We pray for each other. It's just been amazing. We did the Transform Life uh, course which literally transformed your life, even though I've been a Christian for so many years. There were so many things on there that um, 
just refreshes reminders of God and, and who he is and took us back to the basics again. It was just amazing. And so, yeah, it just feels like home. It's our home. Uh, Kim, I'm so glad to hear you say that because we definitely feel like you're part of the family as mm. well as Manny and uh, we love you guys so much and loved hearing your testimony about uh, Gateway Conference and of course this year we had to do it online but um, obviously Kim was referring to the one last year where we were able to do it uh, in person but love uh, hearing that and uh, thank you so much for uh, being so real about why uh, you came to um, CLC. Amen. Yeah. And Jeremy, <laughs> yeah, same I question to you. Question, yeah. What brought you to CLC? And since you've been with us, what has it been to you? Yeah, so what brought me to City Life Church, Portsmouth? <laughs> well, <laughs> when I made the decision, say, right, God, I'm going to do it. This year, I'm going to go to it. I'm going to find a local church and I'm going to go. January came. All right. Looked up on your Google as you do, you know, local churches near me, you know, <laughs> as my mom encouraged me, all right, go to, go and find a church, you know, and just go there. Yeah, I found a few. Okay, City Life Church, Portsmouth. It's had a good university, like um, a lot of students, because I was a student at the time. So good student community. So I said, all right, I'll pick this one. January came. No, nah, I ain't going to go. <laughs> <laughs> not ready yet, Lord. No, no, God, I'm not ready. February came. No, I'm not ready yet. No, not at all. In the 1st of March, just walked in here <laughs> in my jacket with my hard copy Bible, <laughs> ready to go. Wow. Sat down in the back. Oh, no one could see me. Pastor Dan was preaching on breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And it's like I said, the reason why I came to church is because when I look back at my journey and where I've been, it is because of God's grace and nothing else. Amen. Not by my hard work efforts, not by me trying He's always been there for me in some way, shape, or form. Amen. Amen. And since coming to the family, I remember sitting down with Daniel, with Mark, and Pastor Daniel prayed for me. <laughs> I never realized I should cry. I could cry so much in a few hours. <laughs> I, you know, you remember, you sat yeah, with me. I, I couldn't know. stop crying. <laughs> and I don't know why. I didn't have any tissues worse. So I couldn't try. <laughs> so every time I was like, try and snivel and hold in the tears. That's mm. because I had a lot of weight in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a lot of weight and now I just want to pick on something that you said earlier is that you know Jesus radiates through me like the old me like like it like it's so true and people often ask me at work why has he got so much energy why is he always so happy why is he always so <laughs> lively oh, Jeremy oh oh he's a bit mental isn't he he's always happy he's always singing <laughs> walking around singing and stuff mental. you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they don't understand yeah a lot of people have struggled mm. in this pandemic and i can understand but i've thrived through the glory Praise of god. god i have actually thrived during this pandemic but there's a reason for that and i made some notes first peter chapter 3 verses 15 all right it says but in your heart revere christ as lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have but do this with gentleness and respect Wow. Mm. So when my colleagues at work asked me, why are you always like this? I said, because if you only knew the sweetness of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the joy he can give you, not from this world, but the joy he gives you with his Holy Spirit, this is why I'm always happy. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a powerful scripture verse. So <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where did you say that was found again? Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. I like that last part. Uh, do this with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just so happened, I'm mentoring one of the mental health nurse um, people there on the course who I was just encouraged to join us. Uh, so she just started the Alpha course. Oh, you know, right. which is yes. fantastic. Yes, I remember we talked yes, about that. It's yeah, it's really yeah. amazing. And she made my week. The fact that she decided oh, no, to that's set so that, you know, that made my week. And, you know, I just feel a part of the family here. We need to have each other. Yes. You know, iron sharpens iron in the book of That's Proverbs, right. Mm -hmm. right? We need to build up on, especially in times like these. And Amen. there is no greater place to be than with, you know, family, you know, in God. Everybody's my brother, my sister, auntie and uncle in Christ. Amen. Yeah. And that's Amen. where I'm right now. Amen. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're so glad that you are part of us. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, thank you. Uh, you're like one of my adopted sons. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you, you young guys, I love to adopt you. 
and uh, you just have your own. <laughs> you know, the, the other guys makes you feel younger too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes makes me feel a lot younger. Okay. And uh, the guys around the cameras are, are are also laughing as well. But you are you're, you're another one that's part of the team. That's a Mister Can, what I call a Mister Can Do. When I write to you. You're straight in straight there. There's no yes, there's no M and a nine. It's always yes, we can do it, or can we do it this way? Yeah. And that is another great quality of yours that you've brought into the team. You are part of, you're a great team member, and yeah. you just gel so well, and we're so happy that you're here. Thank you. And uh, I Appreciate hope other people, through your life, through your testimony, will become part of us as well. Amen. And uh, don't ever stop. No, not at all. Don't ever stop. <laughs> you have a fan for me. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, just before we close, we've asked both of them to share their uh, just a favorite scripture. And um, so, Kim, back over to you as uh, we just let you share your final scripture, your favorite scripture with us. And um, yeah, just whatever the Lord's given you. Well, my favorite scripture is um, Psalm 46:10. It's be still and know that I am God. And uh, it's my favorite because he gave that to me. But also I've always lived out. I, I, I've always found that I've lived out Bible verses that are given to me. And, and the greatest healing came by um, just being still and sitting at his feet, being in his presence. And it, as I've said before, that relationship where I, he was able to love over me Um I found in my previous life, I'd call it now, I was so busy, never stopped, had to be always, you know, on the go with my children, doing this, doing that, my job. But actually, in the stopping, in the stillness with God, uh, and not being afraid to be quiet. And I find people that are so busy, that they, they're just afraid to, to be in the quiet and to actually face what's going on inside them. And that's, it was hard, but it was transforming. That through that God is, I've been able to listen to him, tell me who I am, my identity, who I am in Christ, how much he loves me, that I'm forgiven, that I, it, it, through that I've been able to forgive. I live a life of complete forgiveness of what happened to me because of this being still in his presence. And um, yeah, he's, he's it, it, it reassured me who I am as a daughter, my inheritance, all those things have come from being still and knowing that who God is. And, and I can say that I truly know that I know that I know he's as real to me as, you know, my husband downstairs through that being still. So, yeah, I just want to encourage people, um, take the time just to sit at his feet. Whatever it is that you do that can just bring you that quietness, just sitting and looking at a beautiful scenery or, or, or you know, just listening to some worship, find quietness, self-care, and just being in the present. And my husband's Portuguese, as I said, and he always used to say to me when I was going through the rough times, penesasia, which means just be, just be. And, and it's the stopping and being in being sad being unhappy being uh, full of love being in god's presence it's that being real and that is um what i believe being still and no actually means thank you so much kim yeah. and before yeah. we get jeremy to do the same uh, kim i just really feel in my spirit just for you to pray I feel like those who might have gone through some of the same things that you've gone through or are going through, I want you just to pray and I want you to pray that they will reach out. We have a team waiting on all the platforms that can pray with them, lead them to Christ, mm -hmm. whatever they need. So just going to ask you to do that before we go back to Jeremy with his scripture. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak the truth, to speak out my truth. And I, I, Father, I pray for anybody who's watching or listening or maybe watching in the future, Lord, that you will press in their heart and give them the strength and the courage to speak out, Lord, to tell what happened to them, that they will um, just 
realize that there's no shame that it's not their shame lord that you are willing and waiting and ready to powerfully transform them to love on them to heal their little inner child to heal what was hurt in them that you have the power to go back and heal and transform them lives that you are our hope lord that living in this lie and pretending everything's okay father that you will just press on them that you want them to live in truth that you want them to rise up and that you have as pastor daniel said that you have a powerful future for us that you have a future that looks amazing and that looks um vibrant and full of life and joy and that you can go and heal back something no matter how far it was lord so lord i just cry out to those now and just that they will know you, that you will come alongside them, that if they don't know you, Lord, that maybe this is their, their, their first time they're hearing about it, that they've struggled with depression or, or, or drug addiction or whatever it is to, to overcome the, the terrible things that could have happened to them, Father. Let them know that you are our healer, Holy Spirit, that you are our comforter, that you are our blanket that covers all bad things, Lord that you are our comfort, that a blanket that comes over, that lifts and heals and loves and cherish. And you are our safe place. Lord Jesus, you are our safe place that we can go when we don't feel safe, when the world is dangerous, when the world is scary. For those that are going through this right now, Lord, you are our safe place. Help them to pick up that phone to contact the NSPCC, to, to ring Life Center, to, to uh, message the church and say, where can I go to be signposted? Lord, that you will help them find a safe place where they can feel freedom and that they will know the truth and that they will be set free. Lord, we just pray now that you will come and give them the courage not to, to live in fear anymore. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Kim, we love you and we thank you so much for being with us this morning and being so open and honest to share your testimony. God bless you. And Jeremy, over to you. Yes. Uh, your favorite testimony <laughs> and whatever you want to share. Um, so, uh, so one of my favorites, I've got a lot of favorite scriptures, <laughs> as you can imagine. Mm. Um, I think one, is great, uh, for my, one of my, my favorite scriptures that stand out for me and, you know, the things that have happened in my life is the book of Isaiah 43, verse 18. It says, we need to, we need to forget the things that have happened before. Mm. For God will do new wonders in your life. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No matter what I did, no matter what you've done, God's grace, again, is sufficient for you. That's right. His love is unconditional. Mm. Yeah. His mercy is anew every day. That's right. You know, but in order to give, we need to receive. Yes. And if we don't receive it, how can we give it? And if we dwell on the things in the past, how can we move on? Yes. It's almost as if you're leaving debris on a runway and you're expecting your plane to take off over it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let God clear that debris so you can take off. Let yeah. him do yeah. it. Too often we try and do things for ourselves. But what I've learned throughout my Christian journey now, you know, and throughout my journey of not learning about God, but getting to know God. There's a yeah. difference between yeah. learning about God and getting to know Him. Yeah. In my journey now of getting closer to Him spiritually, getting to know Him, rigid prayer routine, as you know, I tapped into the old discipline. Yeah. You know, being a soldier, so I got routine. Mm -hmm. My day starts with God, it finishes with God. Yes. Yeah. No excuses, no matter how mentally drained or emotionally drained from work, because you could take on a lot of stuff. Yeah, I give God something, amen. Even amen. if it's on the way back, you know. And this and this scripture from Isaiah just says a lot as to where I've been in my very dark place to where I am now. God can do the same for each and every one of us. Amen. If you're thinking about making that journey, yeah. surrender to Him completely, commit. Let him fight the battles for you. Only he, Jesus can get rid of yes. that way, you know, because mm -hmm. he says to us that, you know, he's our vine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're just the branches. Yeah. And I hold my hands up, you know, and, you know, apart from Jesus, I can do nothing. That's, That's why right. I take no glory for myself in anything I do at work or 
if any success of my clients turn in their lives around, I give glory to God. Amen. And Amen. I just want to, you know, to say those out there who are really struggling through the pandemic, loneliness, isolation, depression, sadness, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. is the time to surrender. Because yes. it's only Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And from personal experience, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be in love with Jesus, you know, to get closer to him. It is, he brings a joy, <laughs> honestly. No yeah. amount of financial reward, no amount of nice car, mm -hmm. nice house, none of that matters. Yeah, fine. Yes, those things, you, you know, you're grateful for those things. But the joy that Jesus can give you, mm. it can be replaced. Yes. And here I am. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Well, Jeremy, I'd love to see you pray into that. Sure. And just, yeah. you know, there, yeah. there's people out there that are that are struggling mm -hmm. that, you know, may not know Jesus. And maybe they think they've got to. People are always asking, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's simple, isn't it? Yes. So I yeah. just want you to just look into that camera yeah. and pray sure. to them. Right. Dear Lord God, we just want to thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for each and every day because no day yes. is made without you, Lord mm. God. Yes. You set our paths. You have a plan for each and every one of us. And despite us, you know, despite what we've done, dear Lord God, despite who we are, who we were, you loved us the same way. Mm. You never changed your mind on us, God. Yes. You've always stuck with us in the past. And now during this difficult time, where people are losing jobs, where marriages are breaking down, where people are feeling depressed. Lord God, only you have all the answers. And we just pray right now that people can reach out to you, can surrender to you, get to know you, to find a church, to start a Bible study, to get to me, to make that commitment to you, dear Lord God, because it's only you mm. are capable of the impossible. Only you are capable of performing miracles. And right now, dear Lord God, it's on a Thank you for the opportunity that I was able to share my testimony because you have a plan for me, dear Lord God. And I pray that I can be a blessing to those I work with and those in general, you know, with the family, friends, whoever, dear Lord God, you have called us to make disciples right now. And we just pray for healing, emotional healing, spiritual mm -hmm. healing, financial healing, those who are sick. We pray for healing, dear Lord, especially during this time. Mm. Because we have every confidence in you, dear Lord God, that during this pandemic, you have a protective bubble around us. Yes. You have set your angels around us to protect us wherever we go. That is why we have no fear. Because we have hope in you. We have no yes. fear of this pandemic because we are protected Hallelujah. by you. Yes. We have confidence mm -hmm. in you, dear Lord God, because you said, fear not. Yes. You are our God. So when we go out into the world today, may we go out with boldness. May we go out with confidence in you, dear Lord God, knowing that we can make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Wow, I don't know about you, but what wow. an emotional morning it has been and hearing from Kim and from Jeremy. And I just want to encourage all of you out there, if you have related to either of these testimonies, please reach out for prayer. Let people know uh, so that we can pray for you. Well, um, I just want to invite you to stay connected because in just a few minutes, uh, we will go to some slides and then we will be back for Connect Live. And um, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit more about these testimonies with Pastor Daniel and Laura. But also, I just wanted to say that um, if you um, have joined us this morning, we have a service again tonight. And uh, we're back at six o'clock and we have yet another uh, one of our guys who served as an intern who's behind the scenes as well today, helping us out with technology. And that is Mr. JC, Javane Curry, who is going to wow. be sharing with us tonight and looking forward to hearing a message from him. So you don't want to miss that. So have a blessed and amazing afternoon and stay tuned as we're back in just a few minutes with Connect Live.